People, what do you say we read Harry Potter, huh? We're gonna be starting a very big vlog. Let there be light. Probably the biggest, <laughs> the biggest vlog I've done yet on this channel. Let's get the thing that I think I need. Ah. Hey, sweet boy. Hi, how you doing? How are you? We're gonna be reading Harry Potter. The first book uh, on, on the Harry Potter series is actually on my TBR for this month, but I thought, why stop there? With the Harry Potter series, you can't just read one book, you kind of have to read all seven. <laughs> In one sitting, in one day, you just you gotta you just gotta do it. And so that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be taking an entire month. This is a month-long vlog, essentially. We're going to be rereading Harry Potter for the first time. So folks, strap in. We are we're just gonna go for it. Cue. That's right. Yep. Cue the montage. Mm -hmm. We're done. We read it. <laughs> I read this like the first day of the month back at the beginning of September. Currently it's like September 27th. I just didn't film it. There was a lot going on at the beginning of the month, but I read it in like a day or two days, something like that. Moving on to the second one. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Let's get cracking. If you couldn't tell, I, I did the same thing. I read this immediately after the, the first one and didn't film a freaking bloody dang thing. Those first two Harry Potter books are really, really fun. They're the books that feel the most YA. They're the ones that feel the most for kids. That first one, you're introduced to Harry and you're introduced to this magnificent magical world that J.K. Rowling has created. It's one of the most unique fantasy settings you'll ever read about. It's one of the most unique magic systems you'll ever read about. And it's one of the most epic stories that I've sincerely ever read. First one, it's so fast paced. It's like barely 300 pages. The plot is warp speed. You just get event after event after event after event and, and things are just introduced to Harry along with you. So you're kind of learning about the wizarding world along with Harry. So I, it's really cool how you kind of go on this journey with the main protagonist. And then in the second one, you you revisit Hogwarts, which is the school of magic that he, he goes to in that first year. The stakes get raised. Uh, some of the darker themes start creeping in, especially the end of this book, the everything with the diary and the memory trapped within the diary, the chamber of secrets itself and, and what lies inside and who can open it and why. I think it's a marvelous, marvelous undertaking. But I think without further ado, we can we can just move on. Dropped a book, oh my gosh, Ian. Okay, no damage done, no harm done. Woo, saved it. People, we finished Prisoner of Azkaban. So the reason there, uh, there's no footage for it is because <laughs> I didn't film any. <laughs> Because I sat down to read it, I was at page like, gosh, what I was like, like chapter four when I started yesterday. Page 49, I read it through the night and I finished it like 1.30 in the morning. Something about the third one, I can never put it down. Those first three, they're so, they're so freaking readable that it, it takes one sitting. Meshach, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Love you, buddy. Every time I pick them up, they're just <sighs> breeze through them. So, you know, third Harry Potter, essentially Harry, third year in, in Hogwarts, um, classes get more developed. J.K. Rowling really, she does more world building in each book. It's really magnificent to see. She adds more depth to the world, whether it's by day to day things at Hogwarts or whether it's new things that Harry is learning about being in the magical world. It, it's wonderful to see. Main plot of the third one, there is a serial killer on the loose, a mass murderer who was convicted of killing, let's say double digits of non-magical folk. Dude's been locked up in the world's most secure prison. It's a magical prison. Uh, he was there for 12 years. No one's ever broken out. Well, guess what? <laughs> he breaks out. Supposedly, he's after Harry. And we follow Harry through his day-to-day -day in his third year. 
He learns a lot. This trope of prophecy and this, this trope of things being foretold that are going to set up things for further books. And I will say the ending of this one always just gets the heart pounding. I love it. Uh, one of my favorite tropes of all time in fantasy, time travel shows up at the tail end of this bad boy. I love the time travel, love how she takes these classical Meshach, stop it. I love how Rowling takes these classical tropes and just turns them on their head. It's It meshes so well. She does such a good job. I'm going to jump into the fourth one because I cannot put these books down now that I've recommitted myself for the rest of the month to reading these things. Yeah. So funny thing about, <laughs> funny thing about Goblet of Fire, I'm already five chapters in. Sorry, I keep doing that to you guys. I, I read a little bit this morning on a walk with Meshach, and then in the morning when Ashton and I were kind of doing our various like personal things, chores, uh, activities, I don't know. I am five chapters in, let's get into reading. People, I got home from work just barely. Whew, what a day, what a day. So I, I told you I was going to attempt to try and finish the book while at work, just listening on the, uh, on the audiobook, and we did it. Oh gosh, diddly dang, did we do it. Goblet of Fire was vanquished in pretty much a day. The, the audiobook is amazing. The, the guy that freaking narrates it, it's, he's so good at the voices, he's so good at really making this come to life. Holy crap, Goblet of Fire. Quick rundown, quick synopsis. Harry's in his fourth year. What's cool, in this book, the main driving force of the plot is this kind of ancient tournament wizarding schools all over Europe do together. Three wizarding magical schools come together. They have a year-long tournament with three really difficult tasks. Champions from each school are chosen to participate. It's, you know, it's a really big honor. It's a really big deal to be chosen as the school champion. And of course, in Harry Potter fashion, Harry gets chosen. But but the, the strange thing about him getting chosen is that he is not of age. You have to be 17 years or older. He's only 14. And uh, he never put his name in the, in the Goblet of Fire to be chosen. So the rest of the book is trying to unravel, okay, how, who the heck put Harry's name in the goblet and how the heck is Harry gonna survive because this is supposed to be for advanced seventh year wizards and he's only a fourth year. One of the craziest endings to a Harry Potter book ever. Honestly brings tears to the eyes when you read a few certain parts. This really is where the Harry Potter books shift and they become more adult in theme, more dark, and it just gets so riveting from here. I mean, it, it's, you know, you can't put the books down really from book one but this one is just when the roller coaster begins and you got to hold on for dear life. What are we going to do now? You guessed it. We are going to move on. Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter, book five. Let's just get into it. What's going on, folks? I'm just about to go to work, but I thought I'd update you from what progress was made last night. Pretty much sat down and... Red. Order of the Phoenix is so good. This is where Harry Potter, for me, really starts becoming five-star reads. Uh, the other books are really, really good, but there is something about five, six, and seven. Stir me, compel me, move me. I love the direction the story goes. And so, Order of the Phoenix. I ended on chapter 15, page 306. <laughs> Page 306, sat down and pretty much read 300 pages in one go. Pretty much read the first Harry Potter novel. And we still have, I think it's an 870 page book, but I think we might finish this today. I have a long drive. I have, I have a very long drive for the locations that I have to go to today for work. There and back and during. It's just gonna be listening to Harry Potter. Thanks, Lava. <laughs> What's going on, folks? Just got home. It was a long day. Oh my goodness, it was a long day. Hey, Mish. Mish. But I got home, finished up my work. The workload that I had for the day, and then I had to go to band practice at the church at like 6.45, so I haven't really been here today. But I have been plowing through this book. Listening to it at work is the greatest blessing. Half the time I'm driving someplace, especially with the Harry Potter books, I don't I don't even remember the journey getting there, which is super dangerous. <laughs> I think when I left off with you this morning, I was like page 306, and I am sitting at 
and I'm sitting at 781. I read almost 500 pages today. What do you guys say? We finish the book tonight and then tomorrow, which is Thursday, September 21st. What do you say we start Half Blood Prince tomorrow and see where we go? Tomorrow I have an extremely long drive. I'm almost going to a different state. I'm going that far. And so I will be able to, I think I'll be able to get through Half Blood Prince. <laughs> I know I, this is kind of a different vlog where it's like, I'm not really filming myself reading. It's because I, I, I kind of want to more talk to you guys about it since I've already read them. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we got three chapters left. Let's freaking get into it. We did it. We just finished the order of the Phoenix Harry Potter. My goodness, this is the biggest, biggest one of the bunch. And boy, it is a marvelous story. There's so many tropes that J.K. Rowling dives into here. Chosen one, prophecy, you name it. The way she spins prophecies, the way she does the chosen one trope, the way she weaves the political aspects of, of magical government interfering at school. She's so good at, at having multiple antagonists throughout the story that steer you away from the main issue, but it always it seems to go back. This book is so good. It's also one of the most touching ones. It's because you feel one of the most heavy, heavy losses at the end, and you can't help but tear up a little bit, especially when Harry's learning everything for the first time. There's so much he learns and there's so much perspective that he gains and you can't help but but well with the emotion because he just, that information could have helped in so many other ways. It could have saved, I could have saved some people along the way and oh my goodness. But we're about to jump into my favorite Harry Potter book. I am going to begin that journey tomorrow because it is 11.03. It has taken me all day and I've, I've worked a full-time job and I've gone to band practice and I've done a lot of crap. People, people, hi, how you doing? Um, if you couldn't tell, I am at work. I'm going to be updating you uh, throughout the day. I thought, you know, it's kind of, it's it's not really all that fun, me just going to work, reading the book, coming home and saying, hey, I read it. I think it's a lot more entertaining if I bring you along. So I'm filming you on my phone. Hopefully this isn't too shaky. Hopefully it doesn't suck. We are going to be jumping into Half-Blood freaking Prince. I love the sixth Harry Potter so much. Everything about it, the book, the movie, doesn't matter. I love Half-Blood Prince so much and I cannot wait to tell you why. <laughs>
Holy crap. Holy crap. Dude, Half Blood Prince is so good. It's like 2.30. I started listening to the book like eight in the morning, just trailblazing through it. I love this book so much because you get so much insight into the main antagonist. You get so much insight into his background, his motives, his history, and it helps, I don't know, it helps flesh out the stakes, really understanding what Harry's dealing with and how he has to manage this, how he has to learn how to combat all the things that he's learning. It, it's literally some of the best world building and some of the best character work that Harry Potter has to offer. Book six is so flipping good. And we're not even to the climax, dude. The climax is coming and I'm, ah, I'm so ready for it. I'm so utterly ready for it. What's going on, folks? I can find it in my backpack. Alrighty, peeps. Harry Potter and the freaking Half-Blood Prince. It is a new day. Liam, check that shit out. Yep, that's right. That's right. Half-Blood Prince, oh my goodness. Yesterday we started it, uh, got to chapter 26 on page 555. So we read 554 pages yesterday. I did read some physically when I got home, like late at night. Now we are going to finish the book today. We're probably gonna finish it within the next two hours or so, two or three hours, depending on how far my drive is, what my workload is. I should be able to start Deathly Hallows pretty much immediately afterward. I will tell you my thoughts after we are done. I'll take you on another scenic drive. Stay tuned. I just finished and every single time it gets better. That book ends with such a tragic loss and ah, oh, it's, it, it makes me, it makes me tear up every time I read it, every time I watch the movie, it just stirs something inside me. You just don't see it coming. And then when it happens, it just, I've already started Deathly Hallows. I, I, I couldn't resist it. I could not resist it. I've listened to maybe 10 minutes of it. Let's go. Let's get through this last Harry Potter book. <laughs> People, man, Harry Potter, goodness gracious. What can I even say about this journey? Rereading all of these books has been a real treat. I think when I read them for the first time, <coughs> Bless me. And rereading these books for the for the second time ever was so cool. There's so much stuff that I didn't remember from the first read arounds. There was so much stuff that I missed. There were some things that I, I new things that I've learned. And it just it just solidifies to me perfection of this story. I love the story of Harry Potter so much. Being raised with the movies and finally reading the books a, a couple of times each just proves to me that this is one of the greatest fantasy stories ever written. It, it truly is. There's been nothing like it before and there will be nothing like it after. I've never read a, a, of an antagonist quite like Voldemort. I've never read such a calculated, precisely created character like Severus Snape. I've never read anything like this anything at all. The way she writes politics, the way she writes the government of the magical society, the way she writes the magical system, the way everything is written down, everything had a thought and a purpose behind it and it, and it shows. My appreciation for it's shot through the roof. For those of you who've, who've only seen the movies and you've not read the books and you're wondering, should I read the books? Yes. If I had to tier rank these books, I would say my least favorite at the bottom is the first book. The first book is so necessary because you need to be int introduced to Harry and you need to be introduced to the world. It's the foundational novel and it's very important, but it's my least favorite. And it's a 3.5 star for me. I think because it's so freaking fast paced that it's like, you're reading one chapter. Oh, welcome to Hogwarts. And next is like, oh, it's Christmas. And then, and then the next chapter, oh, it's the end of school. Like we just read an entire 10 months of this kid's life in two chapters. The first book is like a 3.5 and it's at the bottom of the heap. It's at number seven in its place for me. To be honest, number six is Prisoner of Azkaban. Prisoner of Azkaban is a really solid novel. You're introduced to some amazing characters. Remus Lupin, Sirius Black. She starts incorporating the prophecy trope. It's 
excellently done. I love the time travel aspect in it, in those last few chapters, and it like changes the course of the entire story from then on out. I rate Prisoner of Azkaban like a 3.75. I don't know what it is about the middle that I'm kind of like. In fifth place of all the books, I think Chamber of Secrets is at number five. I love the, the whole element of that third act. The latter part of the second act into the third act where like Harry finds the journal and everything that's involved with the journal, everything that's involved with the Chamber of Secrets, I give that a 3.75 as well. The pacing that she sets, she doesn't let up on the pacing at all. It's so fast. I like it's it's hard to it's hard to keep up. Number four, I'm going to put Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire is when Harry Potter really takes its deviation, I feel, from like a YA story to an adult story. Goblet of Fire gets dark. To me, I'm gonna be honest, the trials are kind of boring. I thought the trials in the movie were way more high stakes than the books. Don't come after me, Harry Potter fan club. The ending of that book. The ending of freaking Goblet of Fire is insane. It, it's, it's so dark and it's so heavy and it brings tears to your eyes. It's so tragic. And I'm gonna put like, it's like a 4.25. That's, it's a solid, solid installment. At number three, I'm gonna put Order of the Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix is the biggest book in the Harry Potter series. It's almost 900 pages. You get so much, so much in there. I mean, there's a prison break, the main antagonist, Antagonist is back and he's in full effect and 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 the government takes over the school and the ending again one of those she kills you at the end of every one of these books the ending of, of Order of the Phoenix is so sad and you don't know how to feel like Harry doesn't know how to feel and you don't know how to feel alongside him it's just we went through so much and it seems like it was for absolutely nothing but it all makes sense in the end that that book there's really nothing there's there's nothing in that there's nothing in that book that would make me go under five stars. So it's a five stars. In the number two spot, I'm gonna say it, it's Deathly Hallows, book seven. Deathly Hallows is nonstop action, event after event. There's so much that you're doing with Harry and the gang. It's so dark and it's so like, there's so much stuff happening and there's a big battle at the end, a final wizard duel and all the things that you learn about what the Deathly Hallows are. I think it is so good. It's pure Harry Potter gold. It's another five star, but my all time favorite Harry Potter book is the sixth one and that is the Half-Blood Prince. On the surface, plot wise, nothing really happens for a big chunk of that book. Harry's back in school, sixth year, and he's, he's learning more advanced stuff in his classes. The school wise, plot wise, there's nothing there. There's like nothing happens. The most fascinating thing to me is Harry has private lessons with the headmaster of the school, Albus Dumbledore, and what he does in those lessons is the most fascinating world building yet in all of Harry Potter. They're delving into memory and they're going back in time that Dumbledore has gathered to learn about how to defeat Voldemort, how to defeat the main antagonist. Thir the third act of that book is so dark and so heavy and it just breaks your heart. It's so good and it's one of the most important Harry Potter books. Five stars. I'd give it a six star, but five seems perfect. <laughs> so folks, that was rereading Harry Potter for the first time. Folks, thank you for sticking around. I know I know it's been a while since I posted. I've been working on this big vlog and then we're working on a second big vlog that are coming out back to back and trying to do a, a video in between. So forgive me for having this space in between content drops. It's just how it rolls with a full-time job and doing full-time YouTube. So thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you so much for your loyalty and your support and your encouragement. It's, it's the thing that keeps me going. I love doing this so much. And folks, I will see you again in the next one. Thank you.